Hey everybody, Shane R. Monroe here. Whether you're using MU Deck or Retro Deck, I'm hoping that you're using the excellent emulation station to curate, view, and run your favorite video games from the bygone era. In this video, I'm going to give you 10 things you need to know about Emulation Station. Stick around. User Interface Quality of Life Hacks. There are a handful of quick quality of life things that can make your time inside of Emulation Station better than ever. Let's take a look. Navigating through long lists of games can be a chore. Use the trigger to quickly jump to the top or bottom of game lists, or even within the user interface options, such as editing game metadata. Using the bumpers jumps you a page forward or page backward through the game's listings. The view button brings up options of which the first item is jump to letter. Simply use right and left to pick a letter, then hit B to exit the menu and jump to the first game with that letter. Pretty neat, right? If you want a game listed at the top of the list every time, simply use the Y button to favorite that game, which will make sure it's always ready for quick play. You can couple this with one of our later tips for maximum quality of life. There are several UI enhancements like changing the transition style between platforms, changing the game's start delay, as well as making several changes to the screensaver, which has been known to annoy people. It isn't all about consoles, you know. It is really easy to dismiss that emulation is always in the form of a console, but Emulation Station and its underlying RetroArch can play old computers like Commodore 64 and Amiga, as well as some rather esoteric things like old tabletop handhelds, neat nostalgia hits from the 70s and 80s. Oh, and don't forget the decades of great arcade games that can also be emulated, perfect for quick runs to the bathroom or other short gaming sessions. Media scraping. The first run of Emulation Station doesn't look that impressive. You have lists of games separated by platform, but nothing super fun to look at or browse through. Using the built-in scraper tools, Emulation Station can be transformed into a beautiful media-filled interface, complete with screenshots, preview videos, and metadata. It's pretty easy to do, and once you have all your ROMs and game images copied over, run the scraper and get ready to be amazed. Earn trophies with retro achievements. Much like trophies or achievements on Steam and modern consoles, retro achievements are just that, rewards for performing predetermined tasks or doing something cool. But this now extends to old games and handhelds. You'll need a free account and you must enter your credentials into Emulation Station. And of course, the game you're playing needs to support it. But once you get everything going, you will find a whole new world of completionist chasing while playing your favorite old games. There are a few pre-built game collections and you can build your own. Since Emulation Station groups all of your games by platform, even when you tag them as favorites, it might be useful to create a new virtual platform or game collection to be displayed that aggregates certain games, like favorites or the last played. A game collection system is built in and has both of these types of collections available to turn on. Along with that, you can even create your own collections and add the games yourself. Imagine having a game collection featuring every version of Zaxxon on every platform, ready to compare and play. Insanity. You can use themes from RetroPie. RetroPie is a name given to a Raspberry Pi mini computer running a custom build of Emulation Station, similar to Emudeck. Being a very popular, cheap way of enjoying emulation, the community is vast, and they have created dozens, if not hundreds, of custom themes that are largely compatible with Emulation Station on the Steam Deck. Some may work right out of the box, others may need some tweaks, so if you're looking for a theme outside the box, check around for a RetroPie theme that strikes your fancy. If you're interested in seeing a theme conversion video, leave a comment in the description below. While you're there, we'd appreciate a like and a sub if you are enjoying this content. Kiosk and Kids Mode. There are two additional UI modes that you can run your emulation station in that can help protect the integrity of your hard curation work. Kiosk Mode shuts off the ability to change anything in the emulation station interface. You can play games, but you cannot alter anything within Emulation Station. 
However, it doesn't stop someone from entering RetroArch or the emulator configuration and wreaking havoc there. Kids mode is just like kiosk mode, except every game in the collection is instantly blacklisted from play. Only games that have been designated as kid game under the game's metadata can be seen or played. Either mode can be exited with the Konami super code up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, B, A. You can use alternative emulators for each platform and even per game. As part of a turnkey setup, like with EmuDeck, Emulation Station will set certain default emulators, such as RetroArch Cores, for the various platforms it supports. But if you don't like RetroArch's handling of a certain particular arcade game, you can instead opt to use an alternative or standalone emulator instead. In some cases, you'll need to use a particular emulator, say, to get retro achievements working, or maybe you want features that are only uh, present in a newer version that isn't in RetroArch yet. Regardless of the reason, you can change the default emulator for a given platform. But what many people do not know is you can even set this at the individual game level, meaning you can pick a wide sweeping emulator for most ROMs for a platform, then tweak the games one by one for the best emulator possible. You can launch non-emulation games and applications using the desktop folder. By copying .desktop files into the emulation slash ROMs folder, you can actually create a new platform listing inside of Emulation Station, so you can launch just about anything without having to leave the Emulation Station interface. What might somebody use this for? Well, launching standalone emulators like Yuzu or DuckStation to work on configuration settings and then checking the results by launching the game again immediately right inside of Emulation Station. Unfortunately, .desktop files are not all created the same. The ones created by EmuDeck are considered invalid to Emulation Station. If we look at these, you can see there's an additional line and a bunch of indent spaces. These will actually break the Emulation Station launcher as it is today, but the developer assures me in the future he'll try to compensate for that. You will want to make sure you copy the .desktop files directly on the deck to avoid any issues with simlinking. You can create a desktop shortcut from the Start menu and then copy that file into the desktop folder for Emulation Station. As you can see, we can easily launch from Emulation Station, make some changes, exit the emulator and then jump right back into Emulation Station so we can see our results. Games and folders can be hidden. You can actually hide certain games and folders from the user interface, either by using a dot notation for the folder name or use Emulation Station's UI to actually mark the files or folders as hidden. Along with the hidden flag, you also have to tell Emulation Station to actively hide these entries or they still show up in gray. Changing this setting requires a restart. The best use of this would be to hide a queue file in a bin queue scenario, or hide the game files themselves in a hidden folder while having the M3U playlist file in the main listing. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video on Emulation Station. Please like the video, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and please leave a comment and let me know what videos you might want to see as a result of the things you learned in this one. I'm Shane Armonroe, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care.